Welcome to the Quit Doc Coaches Corner here at WSTU, and we are streaming online at WSTU1450.com. It's a very special edition of the Quit Doc Coaches Corner. No, uh, no, John Messina tonight. He is uh, he's on vacation for today. You're stuck with me. I'm Mike Thomas, and uh, we've got a good one here tonight. It's the uh, the annual show where we bring in everybody from the Quit Doc Foundation and we announce our winners of the anti-smoking PSA contest. So we've got three great groups here in the studio uh, representing Boys and Girls Clubs, Murray Middle School, and Stewart Middle School, the three finalists this year. So we're going to be uh, speaking with all three of those groups a little bit later on this hour and also unveiling the winner. And then these are the spots that you're going to be hearing during all of our sports broadcasts throughout the rest of 2017 and the early part of 2018, including our, our next high school sports broadcast, which just a programming note will be tomorrow night. We're looking to broadcast South Fork and Jensen Beach High School baseball. Uh, the only thing is we will be joining that game in progress at 8 o'clock. That is the current plan. So uh, tune in. That game starts at 7 out at South Fork High School, and we're going to be uh, joining live in progress at 8 o'clock right after the Dancing Realtor here on WSTU. Uh, back to the Quit Dog Foundation and joining us in studio uh, today, as always, uh, for this annual show, we've got Dr. Barry Hummel. D- Dr. Hummel, what was this, 10 years now? Uh, this is number nine. Number nine, okay. Number nine. So next year's the... The 10th anniversary. Yeah, the 10th anniversary. Imagine? It's been a long time. It has been an incredibly long time. And it is. it has grown so much in those... T- even in the five years I've been here, it seems like it, it, it gets better and better every single year. I think it... Uh, I certainly think we get more and more participants per group because I'm looking around the room. We we have only three groups here, but I think we have like uh, 15 students in the building. Right? Yeah, it's uh, it's packed. I'm packed. a little claustrophobic in here tonight, <laughs> but the uh, and the quality of the recordings, you know, as technology gets better with our phones and our computers at home, it's kind of incredible what what people are able to put together kind of on the fly. I think I tell you this every year that I can't imagine if I had this technology as a kid, I, I don't I would have never left the house. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> One of them did a sound effect when they were talking about the cost of smoking. They dropped change on the counter. You can hear it in the background of the commercial. They have sound effects now. They have uh, background tracks that they played behind them. And they do all this at school. These are the original recordings you're going to hear tonight that weren't uh, tinkered with at the studio at all. It's yeah. amazing to me. Yeah, it's, uh, it's some good stuff. All right, let's get into... Uh, smoking. So I was having. A, <laughs> Let's not get into smoking. <laughs> I was having a conversation the other night. Uh, it was it was my mother's birthday. Everybody was over at the house. We were we were throwing a little barbecue, and I made an offhand joke to my stepbrother. Uh, I, I don't even remember what the joke was, uh, but it was like, "Oh, I can afford to smoke now." And my niece, who's seven years old, was across the room. I didn't even know she was listening in on the conversation, and she just went. No, <laughs> you can't do that. That's bad. That's awesome. So I imagine, you know, that's it, right? We won. Smoking, no. Smoking's gone. We don't have to worry about it anymore. No, the kids I, know it's bad. Yeah, but still, you know, 25% of high school students choose to do this on any given year. And so if you, like when I go to classrooms, I ask that question all the time. How many of you think smoking is bad? If I took a survey in this room, they'd all raise their hands. Mm-hmm. But as they get older, there's different kind of pressures that, come upon them there's different things that they see and so even though they know it's bad it's like sort of like well i know riding a motorcycle without a helmet would be bad but i'm going to do it anyway and so there are some things that still take about one out of four high school students and have them try it or smoke on a regular basis or use tobacco on a regular basis despite despite the fact that they know that it's bad that message that it's bad is great but that doesn't stop everybody so where are we right now let's get a little snapshot of of smoking in 2017, what, what, is, what does the industry look like? Well, I'm going to broaden that to tobacco use in, okay. in 2017. Right. And so we have three forms of tobacco that we would consider to be traditional tobacco products, cigarettes, cigars, and smokeless tobacco or spit tobacco. Okay. And in Florida, since 1998, we've made dramatic reductions in the use of those three forms of tobacco among high school students and middle school students. They're at record lows here in the state of Florida. But in the meantime, uh, several newer forms of tobacco have emerged, most notably hookah, which is more of a college type of uh, tobacco. And then more importantly for what we see here in Martin County, 
electronic cigarettes. So they're newer forms of tobacco, and they are tobacco. They've been deemed tobacco by the Food and Drug Administration, and they're going to be regulated as tobacco products. Uh, all the nicotine that's in electronic cigarettes is derived from tobacco leaves. There is no medical-grade nicotine at all. It is purified from and extracted and purified from tobacco leaves. So it's going to be regulated as tobacco. But that's not the message that young people get. Every time there's a new product that hits the market, um, the science has to catch up with what that does to the human body. But the advertising doesn't have to catch up because the advertising is about getting people to do it. And, of course, in a situation with an addictive substance like nicotine, it's to get them to do it, therefore get them to do it for life. And so the advertising tells one story. People get hooked, and we see large numbers of problems. Years down the road, we can say this was bad, and then we got to try to put the genie back in the bottle. So all that work that we did with the traditional tobacco, you know, we learned that secondhand smoke causes cancer, and we can reduce secondhand smoke exposure in public. We have to do all that work on the newer forms of tobacco. So in the meantime, those are the things that take off. Those are the things that kids choose to use. So right now, the most common form of tobacco used by middle school students and high school students in Florida are electronic cigarettes. E-cigarettes, you see them everywhere. They've really... It, um, exploded in popularity over the years and I remember seeing them in a handful of places a couple of years ago and we've talked about it for a couple of years in a row now and it, it's it's incredible how every year it just you see them more and more and more I was out at I was at a wedding over the weekend uh, up in Orlando and just strolling through the reception people are are sucking on the the e-cigarettes and the vapors are going everywhere and it, it's filling up the room and as somebody who, when I was a kid, you could still smoke in restaurants, but that, that went away many, many years ago. And it's kind of, it's jarring when you see something like that. Now to see somebody weaving through dinner tables at a really nice reception hall, um, puffing out vapor and smoke, it's really jarring. Well, it's, imagine if, if you find it jarring at your age, imagine what young people think, right? Because they're going to places like the mall or a restaurant where they have never seen anybody smoke a cigar or a cigarette, and suddenly these things are popping up in those places. There are no rules, uh, no standard rules statewide or in local communities to regulate that, and so people just do it where they feel like doing it. Well, when kids see that, there's an unwritten kind of message there. That must be okay to do. That's not bad like tobacco. And that's how this process starts. So they don't perceive it as a harmful thing, because if it was harmful, they wouldn't let them do that here. And that's part of why they get sucked into it. Why is it, I noticed that you mentioned hookah, and I remember the first time I saw hookah was when I got to a college campus, and, and there were kids that would bring their hookah outside the class, or outside their dorm, and they would light it up, and you'd be like, you can't, you can't smoke on campus. And like, it's not cigarettes, man, it's good to go. It's, it's a hookah. And then you, kinda, you deal with that situation, and then years later, the e-cigarettes start popping up, and I'm at a comic book sto uh, store, and the guy just lights up in the middle of the store with his e-cigarette. I'm like, you can't – we're in a bookstore. You right. can't do that here. He's like, it's not a cigarette, man. It's an e-cig. Right. So the, the semantics are part of the battle, right? You start to regulate things. We, we don't allow smoking in indoor environments. And so these guys are very quick to tell you it's not smoking. It's vaping. They made up a whole new word yeah, that to bypass from? the rules. Well, it comes from the fact that they used to say it was harmless water vapor. And the use of the word vapor implies that it's harmless. It's really chemical emissions like coming off the tailpipe of your car. And I, I don't imagine anybody in this room would wrap their lips around the tailpipe of their car mm -hmm. and take a big inhale. But Pleasant. that's what you're inhaling off of an electronic cigarette. But the use of the term vaping or vapor makes it sound like it's, oh, it's just like water vapor. You know, harmless, harmless. It's a chemical emission. Is it as harmless as tobacco smoke? Well, it depends on which component you're talking about. We know that it has nicotine in it. And nicotine causes the most heart attacks of tobacco use. Uh, it has cancer-causing chemicals in it. They're in lower concentrations, and there are fewer of them. So maybe there's a reduced cancer risk if you use an e-cigarette. But it's not harmless. It's going to be, there's some harm to it. We just don't know the level, and we won't be able to answer that for 20 years. And then uh, a lot of the flavorings, which are safe to eat, which, you know, a chemical flavoring, we can debate whether that's a good, like, should I have strawberry flavor or an actual strawberry? Sure. Well, you know, what I, what I feel about that My as a pediatrician. Right. But the, what they put the flavorings in there, and then they say it's safe to, it's safe because the FDA said it was safe to eat, but it's not safe to inhale. Think about water. Water is safe to drink, but it's not safe to inhale. 
there's things you don't want in your lungs. Well, these chemicals go in and they cause asthma-like symptoms, which ultimately lead to emphysema. So that's going to be an issue down the road. And so emphysema risk, probably similar or the same. Heart attack risk, probably similar or the same. Cancer risk, probably reduced. So is this what we should be promoting as public health? Should we be telling people to stop smoking that cigarette and use an e-cigarette as a way as public health? I don't honestly believe that. I think the safest thing to do is give up inhaling dangerous chemicals into your lungs. That mm-hmm. will be the safest choice. From a from a total public health standpoint, uh, including including adults, not just children, do you think it would be better for everyone to move off of cigarettes onto e-cigs? Or to get rid of e-cigs altogether and stick with the traditional tobacco products. My gut feeling tells me that if we would just take took kids out of the mix and just we're talking about adults, that if adults switched from a traditional inhaling of smoke to using an electronic cigarette, there's probably some public health benefit to that, right? That yeah, maybe we should move everybody over. But the problem with that is when we do that, we let people use them in a restaurant. The message for the kids is that this is safe. So then we see an increase in the number of young people who start that habit who wouldn't have done it except now we have an electronic point of entry. Mm -hmm. So now we have an increased number of youth, right? So right now 25% of high school students use electronic cigarettes on a regular basis in the state of Florida. We didn't see that level of cigarette use. Uh, We saw that, say, 10 or 11 years ago. So we have this big wave of young people who've started because of electronic cigarettes, and they're going to get cancer, and they're going to get heart attacks, and they're going to get emphysema. So the total population is higher. So if we reduce the number of cancers because we moved everybody over, but yet we tripled the population of people who were doing it, right. we, incre- we potentially increase the total number of cancers. Even though you've greatly decreased the number of people getting cancer, decreased the people having heart attacks potentially decrease the emphysema the fact that you've increased the number of people that's right it's the total number of users that's how you look at it in public health so again we don't live in a vacuum so when we say this may be better for adults to switch well that's a debatable point that we can have is it good for kids to start never should they be doing this never and then you look at other data that shows that um, about a third of the kids who start on electronic cigarettes move into traditional cigarettes This is data out of the L.A. County School District that shows that one in three kids who start on electronic cigarettes move on to traditional cigarettes tells you that it is a point of entry for new tobacco users. Mm -hmm. It's not that, oh, they picked these cigarettes instead of cigarettes. These are new tobacco users. So the total public health benefit of electronic cigarettes may not be the panacea everybody thinks it's going to be. It may be uh, uh, cause a lot more total illness in the population because of an increased number of people who do it. And that perception that it's safe is, is the, the way that kids get led into that. So it, it, it seems to me as somebody who is kind of on the outside here looking in on all of these things, that it's kind of difficult to get people to stop doing and smoking e-cigarettes in public because the handful that I've actually interacted with very defensive. They put their back up right away and they argue, oh, I could do this wherever I want. This isn't smoking. What about, you know, I guess let's take this a couple of, from a couple of different angles. Uh, I'm at a restaurant and somebody at the table next to me is puffing away at their e-cig. What can I do? Well, what I, do, I usually tell people don't confront an actual user, but talk to the manager about it see what the policy is, make it very clear that if that's the policy that they allow that, you, you probably won't be back kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Just to get the managers aware that they can take a stand on it. They don't have to allow it. It's a private business. They can make whatever rules they want. The manager, no shoes, no shirt, no service. Because right? the manager could go up there and say, sir, please, that's it's correct. not illegal, but I don't want you to do that's it. That's correct. You can make any rule you want. There are bars who've... Uh, um, eliminated I'm sorry, I'm sorry restaurants that have eliminated the use of e-cigarettes indoors and put relegated to the same place they allow cigarettes which would be out on the patio which i don't think anybody would have an issue with no, unless places, you're a e-cig no. user correct oh there's listen there is very uh broad public support for eliminating the use of these things in public places 70 percent of the population would like to have 
smoking removed from all public environments and electronic cigarettes rolled into that as well that there's no need listen it's your personal choice you're doing this thing right i always say i'm allowed to go to the bathroom just not in a public restaurant right i'm allowed to do (laughs) things but there are times and places that it's appropriate and so we have to get that message that you know we say same thing with alcohol if i pulled out a margarita at my son's little league game i'd be kicked out of the park so why is this guy with a cigar allowed to do something that actually is affecting everybody around him I mean, who am I affecting if I'm drinking a margarita? Probably me alone. So that shouldn't get a free pass just because traditionally has gotten a free pass. We have to get over this sort of thing of I have a right to do everything everywhere all the time because we don't. And uh, this is a it's a bad public display for kids. It impacts their decision making. And uh, we should remove the use of, of recreational drugs from parks and beaches all forms of recreational drugs, and nicotine is a recreational drug. It should be removed from that environment, and I have no problem saying that. I know, you know, when you kind of, you're in it uh, and you see it every day, uh, it, it can it can kind of feel like, like you said, we've gone backwards ten years with the statistics of the kids smoking in schools because they're now uh, when you when you count in the e-cigs, they're at a higher level than they were ten years ago with all tobacco products. Uh, but it still seems to me sometimes you get that jarring reminder of just how far we've come. You know, I was telling you off air, you know, they used to have a smoking section at my dad's school right. for the students. And at lunchtime, my stepfather was showing an old, I think it was an old Dean Martin clip or something like that. And they're just puffing away on cigarettes right there on TV. And you watch the old Johnny Carsons and they'll ask a question and in the middle. They pause to light the cigarette. It was everywhere. And now... It's jarring to me to see that because you just you do not see right. people on TV smoke. We've slowly changed the social norm that said it's okay to do this in those environments. And so one of the reasons that we're losing the battle with electronic cigarettes with our kids is because we haven't drawn that same line for those devices that we have with traditional tobacco. The things that we take for granted now, smoking on an airplane. Uh, you know, I grew up where you got on an airplane and there was a smoking and a non-smoking section of a an airplane. See, and I always grew up wondering why do they even have the no smoking on the airplane? Because I've never once seen people smoke right. on it. Why are there ashtrays? Why here? are there ashtrays in the armrests? Yeah. And, and so I've been on planes where you're in a metal tube with recycled air, and the guy behind you smoking. There's not really a cutoff, you know. Everybody, if he's smoking, everybody's smoking. Yeah, it was like the cross country trip with my dad. And well, and that era was true too, right? My parents as well. You, you're in the backseat of the car, and you just got to smoke with them uh, passively. And so we've gotten away from that. We have changed those norms. We know the smoke is bad we've we've handled that in a lot of different environments the plane was the most obvious and we've moved on from there but we haven't done that we haven't caught up with electronic cigarettes on that and we really need to do that for uh, all the reasons we've discussed it reminds me a little bit i'm going to go off topic and hopefully i can bring it back uh, i was watching a tv show last night i think it was called american genius and it was talking about the wright brothers versus uh ben curtis i think the guy is uh, and the wright brothers filed a lawsuit against curtis saying he's violating their patents on airplanes and henry ford came to this curtis guy and said all you have to do is tweak it just a little bit and you stay out in front of them in the courts and so he would tweak his airplanes a little bit the old lawsuit would be null and void the wright brothers would have filed a lawsuit and eventually got to the point where the wright brothers went out of business or you know fell down in the industry because they spent all their time chasing lawsuits as opposed to staying out in front of innovation uh, kind of feels that way with this e-cig coming up here, where it's we got a handle on the traditional tobacco use, and now all of a sudden the e-cigs are here, and they hit the ground running, and it, it's notoriously slow to kind of lurch culture in another way, uh, especially when you have to start adding in legislatures. It's uh, an easier way to think of it. It's like playing whack-a-mole. Uh, you know, you, you, they keep saying this is less harmful. Uh, so, you know, it went from they put a filter on the cigarette and then we had a decade to try to figure out what that meant. It didn't mean anything. Then they came up with smokeless is less is harmless. It's not. But they got a decade of mileage out of that. And so every time you handle one of these forms of tobacco, there's the new next thing. And we always have to work on that. And when we finally get control of electronic cigarettes, there'll be something else, trust me. They, they already know what that's going to be and probably have it in the pipeline. So we're constantly trying to anticipate where, where it is coming from next and how we can protect our kids from getting sucked into it. We've gotten the snapshot on where we are with traditional tobacco use down, e-cig way up. Uh, we know that, you know, private homeowners, not private homeowners, but private business owners have the rights to, to say, hey, please don't do that in my 
in my business. Uh, and if and if they don't do that, you as a consumer have the right to say, I don't want to support you anymore. If that's going to be the you know, if you're going to let that in here. What about through the legislature? What, what are some of the, uh, the steps going through the legislature maybe now or in the near future? A uh, couple of things. A lot of interest uh, recently in raising the age to 21. This has happened in several states in the United really? States. Hawaii was the first. Uh, there are some groups uh, starting to look at that. You can do that at the local level. You don't have to do it at the state level. Uh, the FDA rules allow you to raise the age above 18 if you choose to do that. And so a lot of communities are looking at making it 21 because it would be less accessible for kids. And also keep it out of high schools 100% because when you have 18-year-olds at high school and they're legally allowed to have tobacco, they might bring it in for younger kids or share it with younger kids. So that's a big one. Uh, trying to get licensing uh, rules for the electronic cigarette businesses in Florida. They're not obligated to get a tobacco retail license, so we don't know how many they are. We don't know where they're located. We don't know if they're following the rules on underage sales. Even though they're selling tobacco products? That's correct, because it's uh, the state. The licensing's a state issue. And so the state has to define it as tobacco and then license it. There was some late consideration of that this year in the legislature, but there wasn't enough time to get it together. But I think next year that'll happen, that we'll license them like we license all other tobacco retailers. And, and it's not subject to, you know, periodically the sheriff's office or the police departments will send out undercover kids to go see if they can purchase alcohol and, and tobacco products so the vape shops aren't well they would be except we don't know where they all are right that's the uh, issue with the licensing would provide us with addresses and know where everybody is so we could go check on it we don't know where every store is even in martin county because they could be anywhere and they're not obligated to have a license can't just find the guys flipping signs right. on the street well you know the google maps thing is a good one but yeah well there's a guy who does it sells out of a horse trailer over by jensen beach high school i'm sure he's <laughs> licensed um Seems and legit. so that's a big one trying to get that license and then the last one would be just trying to get the Clean Indoor Air Act to recognize that we should have the right to protect kids in parks and beaches and playgrounds. Now, now why doesn't the Clean Indoor Air Act? Because it seems pretty cl I mean, to me, as somebody who looks at it, it should, the Clean Indoor Air Act should apply to E-6s. Well, yeah, you know, there's two issues there. Shouldn't it apply to e-cigarettes? If you define that as tobacco, uh, you'd have to redefine it because it says smoking specifically, and the, the vape guys like to say, oh, we're vaping, not smoking, and so it's a semantics game. So you'd have to literally put in the Clean Indoor Air Act that e-cigarettes were covered. Um, so that would be one issue. But the other issue that's more important is it is the Clean Indoor Air Act, and the, uh, the tobacco industry got in there and put a carve-out that meant the state was the only one that was going to regulate that, and that the outdoor air is not regulated. So the state gets to regulate outdoor air. And that's why parks and beaches, you can't have a local beach or park that says uh, no smoking um, because of the way that law is written. It's just a clever loophole. And trying mm. to get that removed has been, I've been working on that for a decade. And we get, a, you know, a little interest and we can never get it. And there's long, complicated reasons for that, including a lot of representation of the cigar industry in Tallahassee. But uh, ultimately, 70, again, 70% 70 of the population would like to see those rules changed. And so someday maybe the legislature will actually respond to the will of the voters. I'm not sure when that will happen, but uh, hopefully someday that that will be removed and local communities can then determine that for themselves, how they want to approach that, whether they want to have some beaches that are allowed for smoking or no beaches allowed for smoking or whether we can play a little league game in a smoke-free environment. We'd really like to see that, uh, especially as a pediatrician. I'd really like to see that. We're speaking with Dr. Barry Hummel from the Quit Doc Foundation here on the Coach's Corner. It's our annual show where we get to unveil the winners of the anti-smoking PSA. And uh, uh, Dr. Hummel, just give us a quick little uh, recap scenario of, of what this competition is. Well, we do this every year, and we basically put it out there to have uh, middle and high school students in uh, Martin County. We actually open it up to Okeechobee and Indian River as well uh, to produce a 30-second public service announcement. Um, we take the top three as um, our commercials that we run on the station for the next year. And so these are all recorded by the kids at schools or boys and girls clubs or wherever, whatever environment they're in. Um, and they're submitted uh, the way they made them. And you're going to hear basically what they made tonight. Uh, and when you hear the quality of some of these things, you're going to be blown away by what they produce at their, at their local schools and boys and girls clubs. Yeah. The creativity uh, every year always amazes me, and the quality of the recordings is getting better and better. It was just a couple of years ago we had to bring everybody in to re-record it uh, once we got the finalists because the just you could get the gist of the spot, but you couldn't get the whole thing. And then at some point the technology changed, and they were able to get pretty good recordings at home. 
probably just as good as we could do here. So, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that too much anymore. Sometimes we, sometimes we do just to make it a little bit better. But uh, we're excited. We've got our top three finalists in the studio here tonight representing the Boys and Girls Clubs, Murray Middle School, and Stewart Middle School. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to start... Uh, interviewing uh, all the uh, students from these groups and figuring out what they learned and what they're looking forward to. And then we have the winners coming up in just a couple of minutes. So, Dr. Hummel, thanks so much for everything that you do for with us here uh, in our area for the anti-smoking you know groups around and also you know helping promote us here with our high school sports broadcast and everything we we certainly appreciate the partnership that we've developed over the years it's been a great relationship i hope we can go another 10 years absolutely all right it's the quit dot coaches corner we're going to take a break we'll come back in just a couple of minutes All right, welcome back to the Quit Dot Coaches Corner here on WSTU, and we are streaming online tonight uh, at WSTU1450.com. It's our annual uh, anti-smoking PSA award winner uh, show where we have our top three finalists join us in just a couple of minutes, so stay tuned with that. And these, these three finalists are going to be the spots that you're going to be hearing throughout the rest of 2017 and into 2018 with all of our high school sports and our professional sports as well. So the three groups that we have here this evening, we've got the Boys and Girls Club from Hope Sound, we've got Murray Middle School, and we've got Stewart Middle School. And uh, stepping in to, uh, to chat with us here is going to be the Boys and Girls Club from Hope Sound. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to their spot by Arista Onassis. The most devastating blows struck our communities. Big tobacco is targeting the best that we possess, our teens. I have anticipated that this would be us, that big tobacco would exploit the naivete of our teens. What more nefarious and contemptuous than to prey on the youth of our society in order to benefit themselves financially. Diabolical. Our children, soon to be teens, and teens will not succumb to the ill tactics of big tobacco. Big tobacco, I ask you, is it worth profiting off of the deaths and injuries of our youth? Is it your plan to create a constant stream of fiends as consumers to perpetuate your economic gain? In my young age, I must reach out and plead. Brothers and sisters, resist this iniquitous influence. Fathers and mothers, save the youth for big tobacco only envisions a lucrative pit of despair for all those who become victims of consumption. A message of the Shared Services Network of Martin County and the Drug Free Action Alliance. Arisa, are you running for office somewhere? Do you have a campaign website? Because that was, that was pretty hardcore. No, I'm not. That was actually inspired by a, a speech, uh, Romkowski. He was a Juden right in the Holocaust for the Laws of Ghetto, and he did a speech. It was called Give Me Your Children. And when I was in biology and I was thinking about uh, writing the script, I said I wanted to, what, what's something that's going to be uh, visceral, what's going to tag into those emotions. And the only thing that I could think of that could be so visceral and profound was Romkowski's speech, Give Me Your Children, and that he plead, uh, he said to the elders, within the Lodge Ghetto, if the adults wanted to survive, they would have to hand over their children. And the, the first couple lines of that, and the last couple lines of that, pay homage to that. And when I say resist this iniquitous influence, it's almost how he's saying, give me your children, but I'm saying the opposite. Let's keep our children safe. You know, this influence is iniquitous, wicked. And so that was just, for me, that was profound. And so writing that did not take a long time but speaking that took a while to speak it was it was tough it was very tough i'm not gonna lie you're much smarter than i am uh <laughs> that was there was a lot of very very intelligent words uh thrown together and i definitely need a thesaurus uh going through that spot a little bit uh you did a fantastic job uh how you said it was it, it was kind of easy to to put it together but hard to speak it why was that Speak it because the the way I wanted it to sound in my head was I wanted it to mirror something the way in which Rumkowski would have said. I wanted it to have that, that visceral feeling. If you heard it, this would hit you. And my voice particularly, I had to record it. Uh, just the times, were, the circumstances were just off, and I was the only one to record it. And I'm not an advocate for my voice. I cannot stand the way my voice sounds. No, but nobody likes their own voice. It's I don't know okay. how you get over that. I don't know how you do it, but... I just said, you know, if I want to submit this, I have to record it myself, and hopefully I pronounced 
if you guys could hear correctly. I hope I pronounced some of those words correctly. I believe so. I just that's okay. I didn't understand <laughs> what the words were anyway. So I'm assuming you you I pronounced so. them correctly. Uh, you you did a fantastic job, and it really was. Uh, an impressive feat, and I want to bring in uh, Mike Williams from the Boys and Girls Club of Hope Sound here. And uh, Mike, go ahead, grab that microphone right there. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you guys do over at the Boys and Girls Club. Well, the Boys and Girls Club, we do a lot of things it's based off of life skills. We do like career lines. We teach them how to apply for the like a resume, how to write a cover letter. Um, we do like money matters, teach them how to budget out of account, how to open up a checking account, and also be prepared for a savings account as well. So we do multiple things as far as like passport and manhood, like teach um, boys how to become a man, smart girl, teach women how to be a woman, um, healthy habits, which teach them about healthy lifestyle, eating correctly, or diet, nutrition facts, and a lot of things like that. So it's a lot of things that we pretty much we go hand in hand with when it comes down to the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, it, it's a great organization. How much do you guys work with when it comes to smoking, raising awareness, and doing things like this with these anti-smoking PSAs? Well, this is really not the only program that we run. We run, like, Street Smarts. We teach them just about gateway drugs and everything, how to be aware of alcohol, tobacco, um, how to be aware of um, sexual things. We do a lot of different things that relates back to tobacco and drugs and use and just in general. Yeah, it's it is a, a wonderful organization, and mm -hmm. um, what are what are some of the requirements for for getting involved with it? If you've got a if you've got a young you know student uh, teenager or younger, like what what are the requirements to get involved? Well, it's it's really not a requirement. You know, it's pretty much a uh, you know basically a need for everybody to be able to talk about it, to learn about it. So they can be aware of it. If something was coming to their face or their experience, they'll know how to handle it much more better. So it's more of a, a need for everybody to understand the process of what it is. Fantastic. Well, Mike, uh, thank you for everything that you do over there with the Boys and Girls oh, Club. Wow. And Aristo, thank you so much for your entry this year. It was fantastic, and it was a pleasure to talk with you. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be unveiling the winners here in just a couple of minutes. Thank you for having me. Thank All you, right. Mike. Appreciate it. Our next group that we're going to be bringing up here is Murray Middle School. So let's go ahead and listen in to their, uh, their anti-smoking PSA that they submitted for 2017. This is just a little reminder for all you cigarette smokers out there. When you start to smoke, you get a scratchy throat. <coughs> When you get a scratchy throat, your breathing seems to wheeze. When your breathing seems to wheeze, your lungs begin to seize. When your lungs begin to seize, you realize you're going broke. When you realize you're going broke, you wonder why you smoke. When you wonder why you smoke, you could suddenly croak. So don't smoke. A message of the Shared Services Network of Martin County and the Drug Free Action Alliance. All right, so we've got everybody from Murray Middle School uh, sliding on up to the uh, microphone here. So let's just kind of uh, go in order. I want to make sure I can get everybody's names. Uh, so what's your name? Anastasia. Anastasia. And buddy? Elliot. Elliot? Aria. Oh, hold on. I had the wrong mic there. We got all these mics over. All right. Aria. Aria and? Soraya. Soraya. All right. Well, uh, Anastasia... Uh, that was a great entry from the uh, from Murray Middle School there. What was your favorite part of recording? Well, when we all collaborated, it made much more sense than just one person coming up with it mm -hmm. because we all came up with individual ideas. Like, we dropped change for when you went broke, and when you croak, somebody dropped a box, making it sound like someone dropping onto their knees. So it was just really fun collaborating together. Elliot, did you have fun trying to come up with ideas on special or sound effects and things like that? Yeah. Yeah. What was your What was your favorite moment? Um, probably the end when we dropped the box for the um the ending croaking part. Who came up with that idea? I'm not really sure. The kind of a group, a group yeah. effort. Right. Oh wait, Anastasia, you're pointing at somebody. Arya. Arya, Arya did it. <laughs> So you dropped the box or you came up with the idea for the box? I came up with the idea. Ah, okay. there you go. <laughs> Stepping, all right, so what brought on the uh, that idea of dropping the box when and you, the sound effects? Well, I guess when you croak, someone, like, dies. So when someone falls as they die, it sort of brought the idea of that. You kind of have to step outside the box a little bit when you're recording for audio. You realize you don't have to kind of... <laughs> 
You don't have to be so literal with all these things. You don't have to have somebody dropping onto the floor. You could <laughs> drop a box and still get the same the same effect. Uh, what was the thing, Aria, that you learned the most when researching for this spot? I think it was about like what happens to your body when you smoke, like wheezing and like dying eventually. Mm -hmm. So. It was learning. It was. Yeah. Was that kind of an eye opener? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so sorry. I forgot your name. Soraya. Soraya. Okay. Uh, what about what about for you? What was what was well, your favorite moment of recording the this? Favorite thing was actually saying it because the dangers about smoking it can kill you. One and like people need to know the dangers of it and like if it no one pays attention to the issue, it will never be solved. Do you think that uh, it, you learned some things from researching for this and you yeah. were surprised that you didn't yeah. know before? Especially the chemicals. I did not know there's like gasoline stuff in it. There's pesticides, preservatives. Like it was crazy. It was a shocker about how many, there's over 4,000 chemicals in that little cigarette. And that surprised me a lot. Yeah, that is a stunning stat. Uh, we have Cynthia Bishop here as well. You thought you were going to get away, uh, but <laughs> I have to ask you at least one question here. Uh, what do you think, for doing something like this for your students, what, what's the biggest takeaway for them? Let me just clarify the question. Do you mean doing the SWAT club or doing this competition? This, this competition. Co this contest. Let's, yeah, let's say this contest. Well, this contest really brought us all together. And I try to incorporate every every member of the club when we do uh, this contest. And everybody working together is makes it more of a team effort. And everybody seemed to really work well together. And they all want to make a good finished product. And um, I just like to see the camaraderie between all the members. I have like 15 members, 12 of them actually participated, and that's that's a lot to get everybody going in the right direction when you're trying to put together a, a project like this. Oh yeah, for sure. Now what about the SWAT club in general? Tell us about what you guys do at the school besides uh, putting together these anti-smoking PSAs. Well, we do stay busy, and I try to keep them busy with different projects. We do a lot of um, community projects, uh, really outreach in the school, uh, especially. We do a, um, we actually did a, a mural that uh, we had the students raise your hand if you're, uh, if you say no to tobacco, and we had all the students from the school um, sign their name on this pledge. And it really, I think, really helps them to become aware of making a good decision when at this young age, because I think this is the time when they really need to start thinking about it and making sure that they are feeling very strongly about wanting to say no if somebody offers them a cigarette. Mm -hmm. um, we also do uh, fun little projects like making bookmarks, anti-smoking um, bookmarks. So that's uh, kind of uh, gearing into their creativity, but then also we give them, I'm, I'm actually a librarian at the school, so we um, we give them out to the, the students uh, with their books. So the bookmarks really are funded, a oh, fun project. Fantastic. So yeah, you guys are really busy over there then. You're kind of working nonstop. Absolutely. We did the parade, we did the fair. Um, just to, that's, that's the outreach in the community that we like to touch on. And, and the students are so enthusiastic about it, and they are, are so passionate about wanting to get um, people to realize that smoking is isn't bad is is bad and that th you can say no and how to say no is is uh, really a good thing to learn too fantastic well uh, it, it's a great entry this year from Murray Middle School and we thank you uh, everybody for the group but uh, Soraya Aria Elliot and Anastasia thank you guys for coming in here this uh, I almost said this morning I'm so used to working in the mornings uh, thanks for coming in here this evening to you know, talk with us for a little bit and we'll be announcing the winners in just a couple of moments so thank you guys so much you did a great job now it's time to tune in to the Stewart Middle School uh, let's go ahead and tune in to their entry if you open up your mind to quit smoking it's gonna take some time to realize but if you look inside, I'm sure you'll find gum disease. You can reduce the chances of lung cancer and tooth decay. A message of the Shared Services Network of Martin County and the Drug-Free Action Alliance. 
Okay, that was Stewart Middle School. Let's go ahead and once, time, uh, once more go around the horn uh, with everybody's name. So, your name? Michaela. Michaela. And let me just turn everything on right here. Boom. All right. Patrick. Patrick. Genesis. All right. Victory. Um, Brisa. And? And Rose. All right. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start with you. Michaela, what's uh, what was your favorite moment when you uh, when you were putting together this project? My favorite moment would probably be deciding what song we were gonna sing along to, because we had many ideas about what song to do, and when we finally found the right one that we can put all the words together to, it was really cool. Patrick, what is that song? Do you know? Drake and Josh. Wait. Come Drake on and up. Josh. Drake and Josh. Oh, is that a show on? Uh, what was that on? It was on Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. Yes. It was. It's not a show on anymore. It, no. Was it? Who picked the song? <coughs> uh, we all kind of decided on it. Oh yeah. Together. Um, Michaela, you mentioned finding the finding the right tone, the right lyrics, and things like that. Did you go through a lot of different options before you settled on this song from Josh and Drake? Yeah. Um, we went through um a lot of different theme songs from shows like SpongeBob. <laughs> and we also um, did some popular songs like um, that most people know, like Never Gonna Give You Up by um, Rick Aston. Wow, you guys know that song? Yeah. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> Good job. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's move on down the line. Uh, I fell behind with my names, I'm sorry. What was your name again? Genesis. Genesis. All right, come on up to the uh, the microphone there. Now, when you found out that you guys were going to be working on this project, what went through your mind? Panic, fear, excitement? Everything. Everything? All of the above? Yes. Why, why all of the above? Because in one part, it was exciting. The other part, it was like kind of nerve-wracking. And then, well, we had to finally do it. I wasn't a part of it, but like I'm still going to sing if I can. <laughs> That's well, we can make that happen. I think we can make that happen. Absolutely. All right. Uh, down the line here. I'm sorry. What was your name again? Victory. Victory. All right. Uh, what did you learn when you were going through all this? Well, I think I learned how to work with the group better. Um, I learned many more facts about cigarettes that I never knew, like the chemicals, the dangers, the harms of everything in cigarettes. And uh, all right, uh, we've got we've got two people sitting on each other's laps over here. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll start with you. What was your name again? Brisa. All right, and then Brisa, what uh, what was your favorite moment from recording everything? Mm, the tooth decaying. The tooth decaying. Mm -hmm. That was your favorite moment. Yep. All right, why is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because... Just something um, you didn't know before, or...? Yeah. It was, like, mostly, like, how the teeth, um, they start to rot away, and it affects your breath, making it smell bad. Mm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of a gross habit, isn't mm -hmm. it? All right. And then, uh, what was your name again? Rose. Rose. All right, Rose. What was, uh, what was the standout moment for you, recording everything? When we all were working together as a group to create the song because we had so many song ideas and we actually put it all together last minute. Oh, last minute, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how long did it take you guys to, to do all this? About two days. Two day that doesn't sound very last minute. That seems <laughs> pretty... But we had so many songs and we, we had like the last 30 minutes. Oh, so it was you had two days, together. you wasted a day and a half. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in Heather Ryan, if we can get you to squeeze into one of the microphones here. And uh, Heather, the, tell us about the, the group of students that we have here today. Uh, were they, uh, are they, uh, did you notice them learning a lot, getting a lot of benefit from doing this project? Absolutely. They uh, work w very well together. It was nice to see seventh graders and eighth graders come to join together and to be able to collaborate on picking out a song. They had a lot of fun practicing and, and coming up with different lines for the different songs, and it was just a, it was a really good time. Besides the learning, I mean, the creativity is off the charts whenever we get to do these projects. Do you see a big bonus and benefit to being able to combine, you know, the learning element of smoking and, and the dangers therein, but also the creativity of 
putting it to lyrics and songs and finding a way to get him that message out yeah absolutely they um, as they were researching and coming up with different lyrics they were also learning even more things about what smoking can do to you um, it was also kind of a review over the things that we've been learning throughout the year and I think they did a great job and had fun doing it at the same time yeah fantastic well you guys did a great job all three groups you guys all did a great job and uh, we've got all three finalist groups in here tonight you can click them applause it's okay uh, we got the boys and girls club murray middle school and Stewart middle school what we'll do is we'll take one final break and we'll come back and we've got the winners uh, for tonight we've got uh, we'll be announcing uh second place and first place here this evening but these are the three spots that you're going to be hearing for the rest of the year right now it's uh, 6 56 we'll take a quick break and come back and wrap up today's edition of the quit doc coaches corner all right, now the moment that uh, we've all been waiting for. We are going to be announcing the winners for the 2017 Quit Duck Anti-Smoking PSA Contest. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, we've got everybody in the studio here. Everybody's crowning around. Let's go ahead and get that drum roll, please. Now, this is for second place of the three teams. Second place is going to be Open Up Your Mind from Stewart Middle School SWAT Club. All right, Dr. Hummel, uh, we bring you back up here to the microphone. Uh, what stuck out to you about the uh, Stewart Middle School entry this year? I, I, you know, I always like the ones cut the music. I, I think the song parodies and the songs are great. I, I found it interesting, though, that they picked a song without words and wrote words to just an instrumental piece. I thought that was a very clever change on that so yeah, that was great normally we see people you know oh we're going to do a backstreet boys song yeah, but we're going right, to change right. the lyrics uh this was an instrumental an instrumental that's a great call you yeah. know so i like that a lot all right time for the first place uh it comes down between the boys and girls club and murray middle school so let's do another drum roll please and the 2017 winner is don't smoke from murray middle school all right Woo! All right. Congratulations, guys. Wow. Uh, fantastic entries all the way around this all year, Dr. Hummel. All different, all great. We'll give you the final word. we got about 50, 25 seconds left. Well, again, I, you know, we've been doing this for nine years, and uh, I hope we can continue it for another decade. I love this. This is my favorite night of the year. Yeah. I hope you'll have me back for another decade. Absolutely. Well, you're listening to WSTU Stewart, WPSL Port St. Lucie. It's 7 o'clock.